how deep in trouble are the Celtics, do you think? It's not good. It's not good. You know, they're, they're in my mind, and I don't mean this to be insulting, they're the fourth most talented team in the East, in my opinion. And they're, they're, their weaknesses are very problematic. They're not a good rebounding team. And when you double-team Isaiah Thomas and can limit him, they have very few release valves to go to. This is something that was known three months ago. You, could, you didn't have to be an insider to see this was going to happen. Now they happen to be getting dispirited a little bit. One of the things that was the definition of this team, one of the reasons why they got the number one seed was because they were beautifully coached and they always played hard. They played hard till the very end. And last night you see them snapping at each other, getting frustrated. And I don't want to say they quit on the game, but they took their foot off the gas late, which is not their M.O. at all. And, you know, you look at them, they're, they're going to have to really thread the needle to get back in this series and really have any sort of playoff run. Well, you know, the conversation, we're already having it here and uh, we're hearing about it, that uh, the Celtics, if they lose this series, certainly to this team, um, that they could have maybe avoided this by trading for Jimmy Butler. Was that a realistic possibility for the Celtics you at know, the trade deadline, Brian? I mean, they talked about it, but the problem when you get into this is, like, did the Bulls really make Jimmy available? You know, I mean, you could probably get both sides in here. They could give you, you, you give you a, a case. You know, my thing is, let's say they didn't trade for Jimmy Butler. I'm surprised they didn't do anything to upgrade this team. Everybody around them, the Raptors made two trades. The Cavs made a couple of moves. The, uh, the Wizards made a couple of moves. Um, and I think they were behind them in pure talent uh, at the start of that, they they really have played the long game here, and um, I, I do, you know in two years they could they could end up getting the number one pick in this draft, and they could take uh, a player that ends up being a difference maker. They could end up making a major free agent acquisition, and they could be set up in two years to be a dominating team for the next five to seven years. But I don't know that that's going to be the case. I, I know that draft picks after the fact have less value. For example, a year ago, they had the number three overall pick. They probably could have traded that pick. They might have been able to trade that pick for Jimmy Butler a year ago. Now the number three pick became Jalen Brown. Now, some people think Jalen Brown's going to be a really nice player, but you couldn't trade Jalen Brown today for Jimmy Butler. So they are playing the long game, and they've elected to do it, and I wonder – if that plays into what their real expectations of this playoff run are, if they didn't feel that this team was worth investing in in the short term. I love that. A draft pick is more valuable until you personify it. Is that what you're saying? That's that's life, though, isn't it? The unknown well, is always has more valuable than the known. Well, it's like buying a car, too. The car looks great exactly. in the showroom floor, and then you take it out, and it automatically depreciates. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern, on Audience.